What's up, guys? Fancy Joe back here with another mock draft. Going to bring you our first NFL mock draft post NFL draft. Going to be looking at where all those rookies end up falling and discussing that. Um, going to be drafting from the 106 spot, randomized it. Uh, half point PPR league, standard league, one flex spot, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one QB. Uh, with, if you're new to the channel, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. A lot of you guys are not subscribed. Please hit that sub button down below. I drop tons of mock drafts, tons of redraft content, tons of dynasty content. So yeah, stick around. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section. Let me know who you would pick in this draft if you were drafting and who you're excited about from the NFL draft. And I will respond to all comments as always. So let's hop into this mock draft from the 106 half point PPR. We'll see where these rookies end up falling. Going to be very interesting to see what I get at the 106. Ooh. So somebody reached on Travis Kelsey. It started Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, and Travis Kelsey. So Alvin Kamara is still available. Um, Let's hide the drafted players. But I am pretty sure I'm going to be taking Alvin Kamara here. Not too worried about him. Uh, because I think Jameis is going to win that starting position. There were some worries last year with Taysom Hill and how he didn't throw the running back nearly as much as Drew Brees did. That, you know, if he was a starting quarterback, it could be very bad for Alvin Kamara, and I do think it will be bad for Alvin Kamara if he is, but I do think Jameis is going to win that job. I think Kamara might not get the same amount of checkdowns that he got from Drew Brees, but I think he'll get a enough to get that job done and be a really, really good running back. I think he'll get, you know, the goal line work again. So, let's take Alvin Kamara here. And, yeah, that was a pretty easy pick. <clears throat> so, after that, Nick Chubb, Ezekiel Elliott, Tyree Kill, Devontae Adams, Jonathan Taylor, and Aaron Jones round out the first round. And then the first pick of the second round, we got A.J. Brown, Cam Akers, Najee Harris. First rookie, we see where he goes. Najee Harris, early second round. Stefan Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley. So, let's talk about Najee Harris going with a 2.3. Uh, I would definitely take... Some of these other guys, I think, ahead of Najee. Um, but, yeah, I do think he's guaranteed a ton of volume. So, I understand why he's going so high. I just don't know if he's the, don't know if he's running back for me there. Um, but, you know, it just pushes down guys like Austin Eckler and Antonio Gibson to me. And I'll snatch them up. Uh, I put out a video earlier this year on both of these players and why I think they could be the next Christian McCaffrey light 2.0. Um, so, yeah, check that video out. And I think with this pick, I'm going to take Austin Eckler. If this was PPR, I'd definitely take him. It's half-point PPR. I'm still going to take him. I just have a lot of confidence. They added a ton of strength at offensive line. Going to be talking about that in my NFL Draft Winners and Losers video that will be coming out shortly. Probably tomorrow, maybe Thursday. Hoping for tomorrow, Wednesday. But stay tuned for that video. That's going to be a real good one, going, breaking down the how the NFL Draft is going to affect not only the players that were drafted, you know, who won and lost from that, but who are the winners and losers already on the NFL teams of the players that were drafted. So, yeah, I'm going to take Austin Eckler here and get that Kamara-Eckler combo at my running back spots. <clears throat> okay, and then so after Eckler, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire went, DK Metcalf, Joe Mixon, George Kill, Justin Jefferson, Patrick Mahomes, Antonio Gibson, Keenan Allen, Miles Sanders, and Michael Thomas. So Terry McLaurin is still available. Let's take a look at the wide receivers. So yeah, Allen Robinson, Terry McLaurin, Julio Jones are still available. DeAndre Swift is available. Uh, I think he was a definite winner that they got for Nay Sewell. That'll help out their offensive line for sure. J.K. Dobbins is still available as well. Some very talented running, running backs for sure. Because there's so many talented running backs, I think I'm going to be able to snag one of these tier of guys somewhere here. I'm really cool with a lot of these players. I'm actually going to take Julio Jones Um, Julio Jones or Allen Robinson are probably the two players I'm considering. Uh, with the rookie quarterback, though, I'm still just going to take Julio. Even though they got Kyle Pitts, I still think Julio is going to get you know his target volume unless he's traded. Um, but we'll see if he is later. But yeah, get a guy Julio. He was actually deceptively much better than people really realized last year. If you look at the games he was healthy for and actually played, Julio was very good last year. And I do think he'll still be the number one target in that offense. Um, like I said, there's a lot of these running backs I really like, but Chris Godwin's still available, which is a tough to pass up at this point in the draft. Um, 
going to take a look at these running backs and see. You know what? Uh, we will take Chris Godwin because we're going to see if we can get, who he can get as far as a running back option. The fifth round post NFL draft. There's some options down there I see I like. So we're going to take Chris Godwin here. I think he's going to bounce back in a major way. Had that broken finger like he was dealing with a lot of last year. Missed some games. Um, Actually, the more I think about it, the Chris, I do like Chris Godwin, but they did just re-sign what's his name? Antonio Brown, who had a lot of targets and was very good last year as well. I just think there's too many cooks in the kitchen there, honestly. So right here in between Josh Jacobs and Miles Gaskin. Um, you know what? And I'm honestly going to take, I think Josh Jacobs has fallen too far, but I really like Miles Gaskin. He got a lot of pass catching down work there last year. I think he's going to continue to get that pass catching down work. We've seen them really utilize one uh, running back and get a lot of that work. And Josh Jacobs, you know, they just brought in Kenyon Drake with $10 million guaranteed dollars in that contract. I think he's going to get the ball in some facets, steal some touches. So I'm going to take Miles Gaskin here for my flex spot in the fourth round. Might be a bit of a surprise pick, but I do really like Gaskins moving forward. So we're going to snag him there. Okay, so Josh Jacobs is actually still available, which is very surprising. I'm just going to snag him, honestly. Uh, just build up that running back depth. Sure, I don't have a place I can start him right now, but I think I can snag a receiver in the next round that I'm willing to start. And then I've got four running backs that I'm willing to play. That gives me a lot of trade flexibility down the road. I don't think it's a bad strategy to start <coughs> Excuse me, heavy running backs early because you're really just not going to be able to find them late, especially guys that are guaranteed you know, some workload. So I'm going to take Josh Jacobs. Not really care how my roster looks necessarily so much. And then go for receivers now. Um, so let's see. We've got Chase Claypool still available. Cortland Sutton still available, who I think would be really interesting. DJ Chark, Will Fuller, Miami, Debo Samuel. I'm actually going to take Chase Claypool. I think he's just a really talented wide receiver. I think he has a chance to break out in that year, too. Uh, I'm going to take him here in the sixth round. Let's see what other receivers I can potentially snag up. Saw Javante Williams go there. Uh, I'm pretty sure Travis Etienne went the round before that as well. Etienne, you can see, went to 510 spot. Um, that's very interesting. Let's take a look at some of these wide receivers. Jamar Chase is still available. Uh, he'd be an interesting guy to snag. I'm going to take Debo Samuel here. I think he's going to be good moving forward for the San Francisco 49ers. He gets so many touches that are drawn up for him, like run, like basically like run plays where you know he's going to get the ball. And I think with a rookie quarterback, those could even increase. Or, you know, I'm not worried about it going down at all anyway. So I really like Debo Samuel going into this year as a solid wide receiver too. Jamar Chase went right after him. I was hoping I could maybe snag Jamar Chase in that next round and really build that wide receiver depth. But I feel good about the team either way. Um, Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Devonta Smith is still available. Could snag someone like that potentially down the road. Mm, Noah Fant is interesting as far as tight end go. Kyle Pitts is available. From Atlanta. I'm actually going to take Kyle Pitts here in the eighth round. I know it sounds ridiculous, but just because I think Kyle Pitts has that, you know, ridiculous 10 touchdown upside, I think he's going to be utilizing that offense pretty heavily. He was drafted the 104 pick. I think he'll catch, you know, 50, 60 passes in that range this year at least. And he has that double digit touchdown upside. It's just such a talented player at the tight end position. I would rather take a chance on Kyle Pitts than Noah Fant with Teddy Bridgewater or Drew Locke in that combo. Sure, Drew Locke threw him a lot when he was healthy, but still, I, he just doesn't have that ceiling that a Kyle Pitts has, even in year one. I know Noah Fant was a very talented tight end coming out as well, but I mean, Kyle Pitts is a different beast. So I'm going to take Kyle Pitts here at that tight end spot, lock him in, and see who we can get in the next round. So Devonta Smith actually fell to us. Um, he is who I wanted. I was hoping to get him and Kyle Pitts in these rounds. I think Devonta Smith is going to get a ton of targets in that Philly offense. There's really not a whole lot of targets there to steal volume from him, and he was taken with a 10th pick in the draft. They traded up for him. Coming off the most dominant season of what college wide receivers maybe ever had. So yeah, I'm going to take Devonta Smith here, and we're going to keep it moving. 
I really like that I went the running back draft strategy I did because I feel like I've got some solid wide receivers. I feel like I've got a really good bench as well. And I have, you know, a high-end tight end in my mind that has that high upside. You know what? And I am going to snag Jalen Hurts here to get that stack with him and Devonta Smith potentially. I love the rushing upside as well that he provides. And I was able to secure him in the 10th round, which is a little surprising. So, yeah, I'm going to do that, lock him in. Ryan Tannehill is still available. He's another running quarterback who I really like. Could have potentially gotten him, but I, I like Jalen Hurts. I think he's going to run the ball a little bit more. Has a little bit more touchdown upside as well. Not as safe of a starting position, but I think with a quarterback, you really are shooting for that upside and hoping you hit it big. So it's like Phil Lindsay is still available in Houston. I'm going to take him. I'm just betting on the talent in the situation. I want to wait, wait, wait on all of them. I don't because it is there's so many running backs there with Mark Ingram, Phil Lindsay, and David Johnson there already. I, I do think Phil Lindsay is the most talented runner there. Uh, so I'm going to be taking him late and hoping he wins that job, could potentially offer some value. And I think, you know, David Johnson or Mark Ingram, I mean, any of these guys could go down at some point, and then it's just a two-back committee. And that's pretty normal for a lot of these teams. So I'm going to take Phil Lindsay here and be happy about it. Feel really good about my depth across the board for this team. Matt Ryan's still available. I don't normally draft two quarterbacks with Jalen Hurts, though I kind of been thinking about it. And I really do like Matt Ryan this year with Kyle Pitts, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones. They have a ton of weapons there now. Just chalked full of weapons for him to throw a ton of touchdowns. Um, let's take a look at who's available. Honestly, I'll take Alexander Mass and snag the backup to Dalvin Cook in case he goes down. And we'll see if Matt Ryan can make it to us in the next round. I think he'll get drafted. Matt Ryan did not get drafted. We're going to take him. Just lock down that uh, ancillary safety piece for Jalen Hurts in case he is benched. I think that's the biggest risk with Jalen Hurts, honestly, is that they end up you know, going in a different direction as far as quarterback goes. I mean, obviously, if he's not playing, he's not going to score a whole lot of fantasy points. But if he's playing, I think he will score and be pretty good for fantasy, no matter what, with that rushing upside, as long as he's run that ball. And I think he will. But just in case, I'll take Matt Ryan. As I said, got all those weapons there now. Makes me excited about what he could do, the potential he has for fantasy, and I really do think he'll keep that starting job locked down. Uh, it's much safer for him than it is for Jalen Hurts. Uh, I'm going to take John Brown here from the Ve Las Vegas Raiders. I think they have a lot of young receivers there. Who do we, we're not sure if they're going to step up or not. I'll take John Brown, the veteran, and hopefully he gets a couple. You know, maybe he's a Nelson Aguilar of the last year on that team. And could potentially have a couple of solid games for me. Um, let's look. Let's look. Henry Ruggs is still available. Darius Slayton, Miko Harmon. I'm gonna take Miko Harmon. Maybe he slides in that number two role in that Kansas City offense. I mean, not number two um, option, but number two receiver um, role potentially could be very good for him. So I'm gonna take him there. Yeah, I was really interested to see where a lot of those guys go. We were able to pick two of the rookies. Um, saw how early Najee Harris went, saw when Travis or Travis Etienne was picked, and Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, you know, Devonta Smith. We took all we took Devonta we put took both Kyle Pitts and uh, Devonta Smith. But let's go over the team. So we got Jalen Hurts, Alvin Kamara, Austin Eckler, Julio Jones, Chase Claypool, Kyle Pitts, Miles Gaskin, Josh Jacobs, Debo Samuel. Devonta Smith, Philip Lindsay, Alexander Masson, Matt Ryan, John Brown, and Miko Hardman around the team. Honestly, probably one of my favorite teams I've been able to draft this year. Love that I was able to get some of those stacks in there, get that running back depth, get some studs at the top like Kamara, some backs I really liked. Um, yeah, one of my definitely my favorite teams. If you made it to this point in the video, please hit that like button to support the video. Hit that subscribe button to stick around for more videos and leave all your questions or comments down in the comment section as always. I will be responding. Until next time, peace out, guys. Fancy Joe. Have a